What's going on guys welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you something quite interesting for those of you who are neovim users so you're either using neovim as your main editor or as a side editor in the terminal it doesn't really matter i'm going to show you something quite interesting especially for those of you who are already using the conqueror of completion plugin so the coc envim plugin for auto completion or for those of you who want to install it after watching this video now, I'm not going to show you how to install Conqueror of Completion itself because I have a video on that already. I have a video on how you can replicate my whole NeoVim setup. And there I also have a section on Conqueror of Completion. Uh, so what you need to do basically is you can either watch the video or you can do it on your own. This is the GitHub page, github.com slash neoclite or neoclide, whatever. Uh, coc.envim, so Conqueror of Completion. You install this plugin with whatever plugin manager you're using. Uh, again, I have a video on that. Um, and then you can make use of so-called COC snippets. So Conqueror of Completion snippets. And those are actually very, very powerful. Now, in order to be able to use those, you need to go into NeoVim. So you need to open up NeoVim and you can open up a test file, for example. Uh, you don't have to open up a file at all. But you open up NeoVim and then you use a command and you use the command COC install. So colon COC install. And then you type COC dash snippets like that. And this is going to install the snippets plugin of the plugin Conqueror of Completion or for the plugin Conqueror of Completion. And once you have that installed, maybe you have to restart your editor and then you can type COC list to see the snippets that you have. So COC list snippets, and then it's going to show you the snippets. Now, by default, you're probably not going to have any snippets, not surprising. Uh, so you have to create them first. And in order to do that, you need to go to your config folder. So you need to go to CD and then basically your user directory dot config. And here you should have a NeoVim, uh, an NVim directory. So you go into that NVim directory and you can see that in my case, I have this snippets directory here. Now, probably you don't have it yet. So if you don't have it, what you do is you type mkdir for make directory and then you create a directory called snippets or whatever you want to call it. Now, the important thing that you need to have here is this coc settings.json. So this is the conquer of completion settings JSON file. And essentially this file determines where we have uh, the actual snippet. So here we have to specify the path to the actual snippet. So we open it up with NeoVim coc settings.json. And then we need to provide a path. Now, in this case, I already have it. You have to do it um, by default, you have a bunch of settings in here. It doesn't really matter where you place it. In my case, this was the only setting that I had in here. And I had to add it. Uh, I had to add this snippets dot user snippets directory setting. And I set this to config and vim snippets. So again, if you call the directory a different, uh, different name, you can just replace snippets with something else. Or you can also specify an entirely different path. But once you have that, you can go into that directory here. So you can navigate to snippets and you can create the snippets. Now I'm going to remove the snippets that I have here in order to create them uh, from scratch because I have those already here. Um, essentially, all you need to do is you need to specify the file name uh, with the language. So in this case, C, Python, Haskell, C++, whatever you want to whatever you want to use and then dot snippets. So in order to create Python snippets, what we do is we say NVIM Python dot snippets. You have to name it like that because then it's automatically going to recognize that those snippets are for PY files. So whenever you're coding Python, it's going, you, uh, it's going to offer you those snippets. Now, in order to define a snippet, this is actually quite simple. All we need to do is we need to type snippet and then the name of the snippet. So for example, what could be something that you use um, multiple times, maybe ML imports for a machine learning imports, because you most of the time always import the same stuff. Like you say import NumPy as MP, you say import pandas as PD, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, uh, import Seaborn as SNS, and maybe you also say import uh, tensor flow STF, whatever. And once you're done with the snippet, what you do is you type end snippet. And I don't think we need to specify the name. No, we just type end snippet, and then you can save that. Now, what happens now is you have the snippet file. It's also linked to Conqueror of Completion due to the JSON file. And now if you open up a new Python file, so let's create a file, uh, file.py. This is a Python file, so now it's going to load the snippets. You can see uh, for, for one second, you could, uh, you could briefly see here the loading snippets um, 
message and then you can type now ml imports or just mlm and you can see that i can just press enter and i get the code that is part of the snippet now this is a pretty pretty basic snippet we can also make a more complicated snippet for example uh, one thing that I do quite often in Python programs is that I have some menu structure. So let's go into the Python snippet file. A menu structure meaning that I have some selections. So I print, those are your options, what is your choice? And then I have this if else branch and this while not done, uh, while you don't say quit, I'm going to, to show you the menu all over again. And this can be done with snippet, let's say menu snip, or whatever you want to call it. And then essentially you say something like, um, I don't know, done equals false. And then while not done, print, or actually maybe we should print the menu up here. So make a choice. Then you have like one, two, three, four, whatever. And then you can say Q for quit. And then while not done, you're going to say, okay, choice equals input, I should maybe disable the copilot so that you can follow along while not done choice equals input, whatever, enter your choice. And then if choice equals uh, one, then, you know, we can we can do pass elif choice equals two pass. Then maybe let's just do three. Otherwise, it's going to take too much time here. There you go. Elif choice equals three. Pass. Then elif choice equals Q. Here we're going to say done equals to true. This is just a basic uh, structure as you find it quite often in those menus, in those command line menus. And here we're just going to say print invalid choice like that. And this is something that we use quite often. So I can now just end the snippet. And the next time that I want to use the snippet, so I'm opening up the file again, maybe I have a game or something or just a simple application where I have a menu and then I type menu snip. There you go. And I have this menu snippet here, I don't have to type it out manually, I have this template. And now I can change here the past statements to some functionality, I can change the names here and so on. And we can do the same thing for different programming languages. So we can go ahead now and say C dot snippets. And I can start a basic snippet of uh, the basic structure of a program. So we can say snippet base structure. And then I can say, okay, maybe we just want to include not IO stream, we're not in C plus plus stdio.h int main uh, what was it int arc C character pointer pointer arc V. And then we just want to return zero and maybe you want to have some uh, some argument handling with get up and whatever. But this could be a snippet in C and now we can go and say end snippet. And you can see that when I open up now file.c, I should not be able to use the Python snippet. So if I type uh, menu snip doesn't really say anything. So I cannot really use something. But if I type base structure, I can use this base structure here, because it's for the C type. Um, and we can see what what kind of snippets we have available again by saying coc list snippets. And you can see here that I have the base structure snippet here that I can choose from. Um, and if I open up a basic Python file, so nb file py, Oh, now I said POY. There you go. If I open up a, a simple Python script, you're going to see that if I type COC list, uh, actually, COC list snippets, I'm going to see ML imports in menu snippet. And you can do whatever you want with that you can make very complicated snippets, you can even have some logic in there. So for example, a snippet that gives you as part of a string also the current timestamp. So also programmatically, you can do certain stuff here which is a little bit more advanced, but essentially, this is how you do that. Um, and if you don't know where the snippet file is that you're currently using, because maybe you have done it in the past, and, and you don't know anymore, uh, where the snippet is located, you can just type coc command open and uh, actually, where is it? Snippets dot open snippet files. 
And you can see here the path to the Python snippets that we're using here. So this is how you use snippets in NeoVim using the Conqueror completion, Conqueror of completion plugin. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.